Pipe fans all over the world, it's Daddy P on the corner, in the corner, boxing. What? Hey, Terrence Crawford, Jose Benavidez, it went down. Hey, Terrence Crawford handled his business in grand fashion, knocking out Benavidez in the 12th round. But hey, look, all in all, it was a good fight. Um, Benavidez was tough. He started with his jab. Um, he, he basically, you know, the first couple rounds, man, he kind of, you know, he held his own with his distance, you know, and um, his range. Um, Crawford had to figure it out. He had to figure out, a, you know, the range and then had to get comfortable in a comfortable distance. But, um, you know, that didn't come to a couple rounds later. And hey, Crawford began to separate himself. He used body shots to break him down. He broke down Benavidez with body shots. And, um, you know, knowing that he had the stamina. And going into the later rounds, man, hey, I heard Famous a Athletic say, uh, shout out to Famous Athletic. Um, I heard him say, hey, chopping the tree down. You know, when you're a shorter fighter, have shorter arms, you know, you got to you gotta chop that tree down starting with the bottom. You can't start from the top. And that's what Crawford did. Shout out to Famous Athletic again, man. Um, but yeah, that, that 12th round TKO, man, that uppercut, that began the pain. After, after the uppercut, when he got up, man, basically Terrence Crawford was playing target practice with Benavidez's head because uh, Benavidez could no longer... Um, he, could, he just couldn't protect himself any longer. And uh, the referee was a good stoppage, man, because, you know, you remember in the first part, a few parts in the fight, Benavidez kept going back to the ropes and trying to beckon Crawford to come in and, and, you know, so he could try to counter him. But, man, hey, he wasn't trying to do that then, but Crawford had pushed him back toward the ropes, caught him with a nice look, what it was, a right hook, or overhand right, I can't remember. But uh, it was that was the that was basically the end. That's why the uh, referee stopped it because Benavidez would have got hurt real bad if Terrence Crawford would have continued playing <laughs> target practice with his head. I'm telling you, man. Okay, but you know enough with the fight, man. Everybody, everybody pretty much knew Terrence Crawford was gonna win that fight. Some people had some problems with the fight. I didn't. It was only Terrence Crawford's second fight as a welterweight. Hey, man, first time he was defending his his championship belt. So, hey, Benavidez, good choice. I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't a bad fight, man. People all, oh, Errol Spence. But, hey, <laughs> that fight is not, I'm telling you, man, listen, that's the fight I want to see. Everybody want to see it. But that, everybody knew that wasn't going to be the next fight. You know what I'm saying? Based on what Errol Spence said and Terrence, what Terrence Crawford said. You know, I'll get to that a little bit later, but um, I was a little bit, you know, I, I did want to hear Terrence Crawford specifically call out Errol Spence. That, that's me, my personal thing. I did want to, you know what I'm saying, hear that, you know, and just as a fan of the sport, a fan of boxing. You know, like I say, I want to see that fight. Even though I know it's not going to be the next fight, I still want to hear it happen. Um, and, uh, like I say, big up to uh, Famous Athletics. Something else he said. He said, well, Errol Spitz ain't called Terrence Crawford by name after, you know, his fight, his last fight. So, you know, you know, vice versa. But this is the thing for me, man. I want to see these young, both of these guys are not like, uh, guys that get in the media and hog up like to really be in the lights and you know what I'm saying very flamboyant but I would like to see some type of you know them hyping themselves in the media it's a part of the sport you know they don't have to be they can be themselves and still assert their agenda through the media because you know that's that's today's that's how you promote yourself at this day and time through the media, and I'm going to tell you, it's something that, you know, I want to see from these two guys, because see, a lot of these guys, you know, since Floyd Mayweather left, Floyd Mayweather was one that was in the media, and he had skills to back it up, 
But since he left, you hear guys in the media hyping themselves up, but they ain't been having the skills to back it up. But Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford, some of the two most skillful boxers today, they have the skills to pay the bills, but they not ones that like to be in the media doing it. I just would like to see a little bit more of that from them. Now, Errol Spence, I, I really enjoyed what he did, you know, um, after the Sean Porter fight, jumping in the ring, then speaking at the post-fight press conference, after the Danny Garcia, Sean Porter fight, he was very vocal. Now that's something, I mean, hey, honestly, that's something as a boxing fan, that's what I like to see. I like to see these boxers who has the skills promote their agenda in the media. And, um, you know, with so much politics, it just kind of lets the fans know and it makes a statement to the powers that be to say, hey, man, if we don't make this thing happen, we the ones go look bad because the boxers are out there stating their agenda. So, you know, it's just something, you know, for me, you know, that I would have liked to see, you know. But anyway, both guys have made mention of fighting each other, you know, in different other different um, other media outlets like um, ESPN First Take, Errol Spence has been on there before and Terrence Crawford has been on there before and um, when asked both of them have said they want to fight but they talk about wanting it and also in the Breakfast Club the Breakfast Club um, a very good media outlet um, it's on, on the radio nationwide and on YouTube um, they have a big following and it is a very I mean for the modern times it is a very good platform as far as media and they, like I say, Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford was on there too. And both expressed that they do want to fight each other. They talk about this fight as if they want it to be something in the future and they want it to build as a mega fight. So both of them, I mean, the, the lingo they share, they talk about. I've heard Terrence Crawford say it over and over again. Like, yeah, that's going to be a big fight, you know, in the future. And um, Errol Spence, the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, you know, it's just the lingo that lets you know these guys don't they want to let this thing build because they want it to be a big pay-per-view payday for both themselves. And I understand that now, although, hey, I would love to see that fight happen early 2019. I would love that. But reality is just, you know, that's just not the nature of the business right now. You know, especially with them having, um, they signed, they, they under two different managements and promotions. They also own two different networks. All of that stuff will have to come together. I heard Bob Barham say, hey, it can happen. But, you know, it's, it's still not going to be something that's just going to happen just like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, certain things have to be aligned in the business for it to happen. Um, and I think at least one of them need to pick up another belt, you know. So it is what it is, but um, and that's the thing too about the sport, man. You see, like Sean Porter just won, you know, that WBC, you know, that vacant belt. Danny Garcia, Sean Porter fought for it. Sean Porter was victorious, and um. You know, everybody was talking about Al Hammy go put pressure on the winner of that fight to fight Errol Spence. Yeah, they pro he probably is. But it ain't going to be the next fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It ain't going to be the next fight. And that's just how it's looking. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, what's next for both of the guys, man? Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence Jr., um, two of the most talked about welterweights right now to date. And these guys are the kings, man. Keith Thurman, man, look, I'm going to tell you, I have uh, respect for what Keith Thurman has done. I have respect for his skill set. Uh, he took two big fights back to back. Now, that was a guy who did it. You know, it was very, it's very uncommon at this day and time in boxing. But Keith Thurman took uh, Sean Porter. Then he took on Danny Garcia back-to-back -back wins you know and that's why he was considered the number one welterweight but since then we haven't seen hide nor hair 
I mean, yes, he was uh, recovering from a, a big injury. Um, it was stated that he injured himself again in a camp. Um, he's gotten married, got a baby on the way, all of these different things. And um, he, a couple times he had some um, dates set, even on, I think it was on box rec at one point in time, but it ne he never had an opponent. And I was, man, <laughs> I was on another platform. I ain't gonna say no names, but you know, I was on another platform that, you know, a guy, uh, somebody I'm subscribed to, and him and another guy on this panel on the live feed kind of jumped on me because I said something because they was talking about him a lot. And I was like, well, this guy is not like, <laughs> he don't have, he ain't been back in a while. And you know, although they talking about he gonna fight, they don't, he don't have an opponent. And when I said that, I got jumped on in the live feed like I was trying to diss him or something. No, I respect Keith Thurman for what he's done, but it just looked like he wasn't coming back soon. And I guess I was right. You know, and now everybody going on like, you know, hey, like, oh yeah, Keith Thurman not coming back. Yeah, the same people. But I said it and got jumped on. But I'm telling you, Keith Thurman right now, although very respected, is not, to me, he's not a guy that's that's like, I don't think of him as number one anymore because he has not been active. And when he does come back, he's not just go jump in there with an Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford. I mean, it, he would be crazy too, you know? He's gonna take a soft touch or two, you know? And then try to get into, you know, probably a, a top contender. Um, I don't know what the WBA is doing. He's the super champion over there, but I don't know what the WBA doing over there with him. They have not put him as a champion in recess, um, but he's still considered as the WBA super champion. So he's going to have to make a decision here shortly, or he may be put in recess. But what's next for Crawford and Spence? We know... Um, so we talked about <laughs> the WBC champion, Sean Porter. He does not look to obviously be next, honestly, uh, for either of these guys. Um, the WBA champ, super champion, Keith Thurman, does not look to be next. Um, so, and it doesn't look like they're going to fight each other either. Now, Igadias Kavalaskas, um, he's ranked in all the sanctioning bodies. Um, but he's ranked number two in the WBO and he is also a guy, he's under top rank. So him and Terrence Crawford share that in common. Um, he seems like the next guy that they trying to push up in the division. And the reason why I say that, you remember Jose Ramirez was supposed to fight the guy, who was it? That O'Connor or something, I can't remember. And the guy couldn't, uh, not only couldn't make the weight, but he, he, passed out or had to be hospitalized from trying to make the weight so the fight was canceled and so they pushed up Igadias Kavalaskas his fight as being the main event you know um, he won the fight but he wasn't spectacular in doing so so I don't know how that's going to play out but that may be somebody they want to try to push up for uh, Terrence Crawford you know that Ugas is ranked number two in the IBF which Errol Spence holds um, there's no ranking for number one right now. It's like no nobody in that slot. You guys is number two. So I don't know if Errol Spence going to do that or it's been other talks. Um, according to Boxing News 24, Jim Dower, the IBF has ordered Jesse Vargas and uh, Kudratio. I can't, it's hard to pronounce this guy. Abdul Kakharov whatever Abdul Kak Abdul Kakharov he's gonna be like him and Jesse Vargas supposed to be fighting for an IBF eliminator now uh, you know you know that Jesse Vargas is on the zone and her has ideas of him you know fighting for a WBC eliminator but whatever you know either way that's just some talk you know for the IBF and um, you know possibilities for 
and I've heard him say in the past, Eric Smith say in the past, that he wouldn't mind fighting Jesse Vargas. Because Jesse Vargas does has a notable name, but that Spence said that before the the uh, Thomas Delorme fight. So you know with that happening, I don't know if he real interested or not. But it's still a good name for his resume. I can't help but mention Amir Khan for any welterweight right now is a good name for your resume. And Amir Khan has has mentioned Errol Spence's name. Uh, he's he been talking about he want to fight top guys and all that, but he also mentioned Errol Spence by name. And man, that'll be a real good guy for Errol Spence to have on his resume. Um, and, and I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I don't, you know, the hand speed of Amir Khan is uh, second to none in the welterweight division, but Errol Spence, man, he goes to the body so crucial. I'm going to tell you, I think he'll get Amir Khan out of there. And like I say, that'll be a good uh, for Terrence Crawford too. Amir Khan will be a good fight for Terrence Crawford as well, you know. But, you know, however it go, man, uh, we know, to me, those are the top two guys in the welterweight division. They are definitely the most talked about in the welterweight division. They keep winning. And I think they're going to keep winning. And they, they setting themselves up for a mega fight. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see it happening before late 2019, maybe even 2020, you know. Um, that's just the nature of the sport. I would love to see it. Like I say, I, like I said, I would myself personally, I would love to see it happen in early 2019. It's just not going to happen. Um, like I say, if it does happen, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. But, uh, you know, I'm a fan of the sport. I would love to see these guys get it on. Um, but I, I would love to see all these good, talented welterweights get it on, man. These belts get sorted out. I would love to see an undisputed champion before the year 2020. Um, and it's very possible, but because of the politics of the sport, it just right now it's just not looking like we're gonna have an undisputed champion before the year 2020. Um, but anyway, that's just my take on things, man. I would have loved to see Terrence Crawford call out Errol Spitz. He didn't do it, um, but both guys, like I say, have you know acknowledged each other in times past and have talked about fighting each other in a big fight, a mega fight. And hey. Until then, it's Daddy P on the corner in the corner boxing. Slap that like button for me. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon to be notified every time it go down. It's Daddy P signing off.